how can you prep for a forest fire or fires of any kind um, something that we have done here on our property our homestead if you will um, we've done this now for a while um, we catch rainwater first and foremost so we have a bigger tank I'm going to show it here in just a minute but there's another thing that we do um, because we had a, a fire start at uh, our property in Littleton that we used to own years ago I had a Honda Big Red really nice old one a three-wheeler if you don't know what that is and the I left fuel sit in it over the winter and the ethanol uh, that was in the gas unfortunately ate away at the the uh, the rubber gasket that goes on the bowl bottom part of the carburetor and it was leaking gas and I didn't even know it and uh, we had gone through some muddy water and there was you know you get water splashing up on the hot motor or on the exhaust and it steam will come up and so we pulled up in you know on the three-wheeler and uh, my wife got off the back and I saw steam coming up and I thought it's just steam from the water that we were running through it was early spring on our trail coming in our road going it back to the property and it turned out no it was actually gasoline and my son was on a chest carrier and I was just starting to get off and it went woof, and it lit up the flames and I thankfully got off and nobody was hurt Oliver wasn't burned but uh it started to burn and um we ended up losing the three-wheeler and there was just no way I couldn't get anything to it but the bad thing is it was a, a breezy day and the fire was starting to spread and it started to spread out and thankfully there was a spring right down from where I had parked the three-wheeler so I was able to get water for it but at first there was nothing I could do but just grab there was a rake there that was a there was a little thing that was left over where they put some of the stuff from the cabin that had been there um, long story short I grabbed the rake and I was you know you go and basically you get ahead of the fire and you pull it back into itself so you know you you could put the fire out that way but I was running around as fast as I could and then I was able to get some a container go down to the spring fill it up and I'd come up and I'd put different areas out but it was it took me a good amount of time to put it out and it spread you know it was starting to spread pretty quickly calls and let me show you here this is really sad but uh there's the there it is our 1985 Honda Big Red just show you here real quick just to show you how hot this fire was right there is some molten aluminum just uh, part of the three-wheeler there's an old tire pump that I had in the back little storage area right there it used to be there it was plastic of course but uh, this is the devastation totally burned there's some more you can see the front fork there down by the brake area it just melted that aluminum just melted that's how hot this fire was and I mean it just exploded and flames shooting up like crazy and and then if you can see around here a little bit I'm not going to show everything but you can see that this is all burned out up in here all burned so there was absolutely no time to even think about trying to save the three-wheeler we had to save the forest from burning down I almost had a big forest fire and a little one here but it got into this slash pile here and I was able to put that out um, so and I've put other forest fires out over the years you know we'd have growing up and things we'd have a brush fire or be burning some trash or whatever and, and it would get away and you know you have to take care of it my father was a um, 911 dispatcher and a firefighter for years and an EMT for even longer than that so he taught me a lot of things about proper way to put out fires but nothing beats having water the problem is if it gets into a remote area um, you can't exactly get fire trucks in there and that's why you have a lot of these forest fires in remote areas and of course we saw the whole thing with the Maui fire here down in Hawaii which is the, the real tragedy of that whole situation is how the firefighters and the police and everything handled it. I heard stories where they were actually um, blocking roads. People couldn't get out of the area where it was going to be burned. And, you know, 114, I think it is, that are dead and maybe over a thousand that are missing. Just ridiculous. But uh, I saw a guy yesterday and on his channel and he was talking about, you know, listening to the government, doing what the government said actually got you killed. 
down there. Got a lot of people killed. And you have to, you know, understand your relationship to God and say, okay, I don't think God wants me to submit to these people right now because they don't know what they're doing. Um, and, you know, had back when we had our forest fire at Littleton, when the big, our Honda Big Red burned, had I called the fire department, it would have taken them forever to get up there and it would have probably been, you know, Lord only knows how big of a problem. I took care of it myself. That's the whole point of being a prepper, preparing. And it, it, I, I don't really like the term prepper because it's just having common sense, you know? Um, so all that to say this, let me show you here in front of one of our buildings. This is actually our laundry house um, where we do our laundry. Right there it is. And what's the prep that we do? Down here. Any kind of old uh, plastic jug like that, what we do is we um, we fill it with rainwater catchment is what we do. And of course you clean out the oil containers there. You can see some of the oil containers. But um, any kind of you know grape juice containers there. We have, uh, there's one for dish soap right there where my foot's touching. Um, you know, juice containers, anything at all that can hold water. We put that in there and and uh, and then the rainwater catchment, I'll show you this over here, if you'll come right this way. Um, we have these, these uh, feeding trough things, these galvanized tubs, and this thing here holds 170 gallons. And it drips off the roof right there, drips down into there, 170 gallons there, and then we have another one on the other side. And, um, you know, so that's, what, 340 yeah, I think I got that right. 340 gallons of water on either side of the uh, building there. And then you have all of this down here. It's a few, I don't even know what that would equal. Um, you know, maybe maybe 100 gallons total or something like that. But, you know, um, had I done that at our property, it would have been a whole lot better. There's Oliver, of course, back there, the troublemaker. Uh -huh. um, but we have, I'm not going to bother showing it, but back that way, um, there's an area where we'll burn brush and things like that. We have these uh, invasive plants here on the property called uh, Japanese honeysuckle. And we cut those and we cut other things like that and we take it back there, let them dry out a little bit and then we'll burn it back there. So, you know, fire back there probably maybe, I don't know, 50 feet behind this laundry building here back that way and we have all this water here you know probably uh, I would say 400 gallons of water right here uh, that we can fight it you know if it starts to get away from us or whatever else we can just go right back there and and or just come over here excuse me and uh, get what we need so just something to think about you know a lot of people just think well it'll never happen here um, well I think uh, there's a lot of places where it could happen um, and on purpose. So I would suggest you keep your plastic containers like that. And I mean, if it's a really bad fire, I was thinking about this, you could actually just take those, you know, and just throw them into where the fire's at and whatever, and the flames will, you know, get through the plastic, obviously, and, poof, and it'll just be, you know, a gallon of water right in that spot and burst and run all over the place you could just be throwing them in there not even have to take it and try to pour it on it um just something to think about you know that's you know it doesn't cost you anything and uh you know if you have a shed or some kind of a thing like that you can put them in underneath or or just put them out around stuff and oh it's going to get moldy or you know algae growing it well who cares <laughs> doesn't matter it's just to put out a fire so just thought i'd make a little video there um what were you going to say if you have wondered what Japanese honeysuckle looks like, right over there. Yeah. That monster. Over there, you can see there's a, the bigger trees are choke cherry, and then you have out around it, there's some little shorter green ones. Uh, but, you know, it's a it's an invasive species, and, and uh, it uh, messes up the native plants and things, so that's why we get rid of it. Um, but... Just something to think about 
it's kind of a one of those things that uh, it's you know I don't like to use the word insurance because I, I don't like insurance it's a that's another big scam as people in Maui are finding out a lot of their insurance isn't wanting to cover things and the insurance companies will drop you if it gets too expensive I actually knew a guy uh, family went to a church building where I was born and raised and they had a son that had I think spinal meningitis or some kind of a thing like that degenerative nerve you know type of thing and and uh, I knew the boy you know growing up and um, you know and they were farmers you know and and I didn't have a huge amount of money but they they had medical insurance and and you know he started to have all these health issues and uh, the health insurance eventually dropped them and they were left with you know I forget what it was hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical bills just ruined the family you know but the insurance well we're there for you you're in good hands you know yeah uh -huh. until it costs too much and then the insurance company drops you so um, learn to take care of yourself learn to be self-sufficient okay that's the the whole point here um, in Bible believing Christianity is that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ you don't need a holy priest to rule over you in terms of a man um, especially a celibate one from the Catholic Church you don't need that <laughs> um, and you don't need some organized religion thing and whatever else to be part of you don't need that okay personal relationship with Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit of God will lead you into all truth he'll show you things in the scriptures and if you can get out of debt and raise your own food grow your own food um, uh, you know control the heat in your home if the power grid goes down you're able to have electricity have lighting whatever you need um, offline written paper books that you can read um, all of that stuff homeschool your children don't send them to public school um, just be self-sufficient okay the Lord will provide for you uh, if you trust him so um, but the Lord gives you sense too, common sense okay I can't just say you know hey I'm going to I will uh, um, you know we'll just get through the winter the Lord will provide for heat don't worry he'll make it sunny enough that we can stay warm no I have to cut and split the firewood there all right and we have plenty of firewood elsewhere too I'm not going to show all of it but uh, we have a lot of firewood and you know that's just some extra that we did this year so we have a lot left over from other years so um, learn to take care of yourself to be independent um, because Satan knows that uh, he can really get you into a bad situation if you're uh, if you owe people so uh, that is going to be eight yeah, that is going to be it uh, <laughs> still early here in the morning it's a little bit after six o'clock supposed to rain today so um, I guess that'll be it. See you in the next video.